Okay, so hi everyone. <laughs> so for my presentation um, with Caribbean Feminists, I am doing a recap of our journey as we're advocating for climate and labor justice, which I must say has been largely um, due to this program. And I would like to first thank you all so much. I'm Amira and Afifa and the entire um, Caribbean Climate Network and by larger extension, 350.org for allowing me to enter this space and to enter with these ideas that I at one point was so nervous to even come with. <laughs> but you all believed in this vision and believed in what this can become. And so, yes, thank you all so much for that. So let me go next slide. So for this, um, I'm gonna say it as, as briefly as possible. Um, so we have the overview, um, just a recap on our team, the formation of our team, team actions, collaborations, our achievements, mentorship lessons that I um, gained from this program and our future goals. And please, y'all can stop me if I'm speaking too fast. <laughs> okay, so for the Redefining Work series, this is something that I started with Caribbean Feminists as Sophia, who is the founder, she would usually say that's my brainchild. <laughs> and I created it because I thought I kept thinking a lot about the challenges and barriers to worker safety and how they impacted by harmful work practices, both for the workers, communities, and the environments. So the key focus is really to provide a platform for workers, employers, community members, literally anyone who would be able to be engaged in participating in trainings to identify workplace hazards, and especially risks that are due to hazardous work practices or even natural hazards, such as those from climate risks, and ways that they can do risk reduction strategies for risk management. So what we did for this project is that we intersected it with climate justice because there is such a great recognition to an extent that climate change is impacting people. However, as it relates to labor, there are still some missing gaps for understanding how workers are directly impacted by climate change. So for this project, we are working to address the prevalence of climate risks and the exposure to workers in Trinidad and Tobago. And we are working to do this by engaging with community members, workers, and many other facets of the public to further understand how they are impacted by climate risks that can include so many factors relating to heat, relating to weather patterns, as we've just seen with um, Hurricane Barrel, those are things that impact workers. And that is where we are trying to take our stance to understand further how workers are impacted. And then our future goal would be to provide a risk analysis that would be supplemented by policy recommendations that businesses that we can also um, propose to government agencies that they can adapt against occupational climate hazards in Trinidad and Tobago. So for this project, um, what we did, of course, with the support of you all, <laughs> what I what we did is that we were able to gather an amazing team of volunteers and we had some critical areas that we wanted to wanted them to focus on. So for what you're seeing here, the team leads would be Sophia Alexander, which is the founder, of course, myself, which I'd identify as the project lead. And then we we're able to create three additional teams, which would be the writing team, research team, and the social media team. And they all do an amazing job of finding ways and strategies to not only have persons get the opportunity to understand how it's intersectional with, within climate and worker justice, but also provide opportunities to let people further learn, let people further understand how they can be protected as workers and even give spaces that they can share because it's also a learning process for us as we move forward to further understanding how workers are impacted in Trinidad and Tobago. So for what we've done from, well, when I got the, um when we got the volunteers, that was actually in March. And from there on, we have done a series of activities. One of them is that we have coordinated monthly team meetings, which is basically each month I would have a topic. I'm um, similar to what you all would do here. <laughs> I'd have a topic. Um, we actually also get persons, um, whether it's persons from leadership fields, leadership coaches, and different fields come in as well. But we choose a particular topic that we can teach um 
to our volunteers. And we also use that as an opportunity to strategize against our actions for the month, um, ways that they can get support and other details that would help grow us as a group. One other factor would be, we also have online educational content, which will be back where the different teams come about because we are primarily a digital advocacy platform, but I am stepping into in-person activities. So for the most part, we do things such as provide educational content in the form of articles, infographics. We also do some interviews and speaker sessions with persons, whether it be via Instagram Live, Zoom, um, Google Meet. We try to use as many options as we have available to us of course, within the accessibility as well to write educational content for our attendees. And we also have monthly public trainings. So that is where we reach out to persons within the climate and labor fields. And we provide with basically community engagement sessions where they'll be able to share some details on a topic that we agree upon. And experts in the field will be able to provide more insights for us to learn with and understand a little bit better. So one of the um, main things, one of them <laughs> was the importance for collaborations for me for this, um, for this project. And I had a bit of a struggle with it at first, but after a while I, I really understood how to go about that. So for what you're basically seeing here are some of the people that we were able to collaborate with to an extent. So for the first person is Deval Barzi, who is the um, founder of the Climate Conscious Podcast. And she was one of the persons that we had for our first public community engagement session where we spoke as the introduction on the intersections of climate and worker justice. We've also had Stephanie Sam, who's a psychologist based in Trinidad and Tobago. And she was one of our speaker sessions for an Instagram live session that we had in May that connected climate, labor, and um, worker, climate, labor, and mental health, sorry. And she was able to provide a lot of insights to how workers are impacted by climate change. Along from, alongside that, we also had Eleonora Bonacosa, who is a leadership coach. And she was actually one of the persons that we had for our team meeting sessions that we utilized based, off her, based, on, her, based on her experience. And she was able to teach all of us some few details in terms of how we can be excellent leaders in our fields and the many capabilities that we hold. And then one of the one of the I should say um groups um that we held with the event that we had recently for the I Love the Caribbean um campaign that was our co-create hub. And we were so excited to have this collaboration because they were very excited to be able to host us in their space and also present the, the willingness to have us host future events with them as well. So those are one of the people that we are solidifying to have future in-person events um, moving forward. So for achievements, one of them, I should say, is this event, which I would have mentioned, um, because this is the first event that I've ever been able to host <laughs> at all um, within this work, this type of work. And it was entirely possible with the team, with the support of the Caribbean Climate Network, with the, the encouragement that you all gave me that everyone gave me to be able to bring this into fruition. And what we did for this event was focus on truly appreciating and valuing people and more specifically workers and understand how they're impacted by climate change. So we were able to bring forth some topics such as discussing existing climate risks, the demographics at risk or vulnerable, vulnerable groups, barriers to their safety, at work and some strategies to incorporate climate risk reduction at work. And everyone brought so many amazing ideas that we made very careful note of because those are what we're gonna use as well as we're moving forward and as we are trying to further work towards achieving our goals. And moving forward, so with the mentorship lessons, which I, I, I believe I would have um, shared before, one of them before, these are some of the others that really stood with me. Just, just to be clear, all of them stood with me, but these are the ones that um, I had to do a lot of thought and introspection because it changed how I navigated as a collaborator 
and as a leader in this space. One of them would be planning because, of course, I'll have to identify teams' needs. We'd have I'd had to to be very, very meticulous <laughs> with my planning, and thankfully, my team also made it clear that I'm I'm really good at this. So I guess everything came into play with that whole that whole essence of planning, which I learned from you all. The other would be check-ins. I remember speaking with um Amira for one of our check-in sessions, and she really emphasized how important it is just to give, you know, your your team members that space to, to you know, just to check in with them to see that they're okay, to be able to engage with them, give them opportunity to share feedback and suggestions, not always would they be so willing to do it in an, an open platform with everyone else. And that stood with me so that I am able to say, you know what, it's not always that I have to check in with people for the work that we're doing. It's also to check in with them because they're people and they have so much things going on with them besides the work that they do. So that is something else that stood to me. Another would be partnerships because it's really important to be able to collaborate to help to create a network of support, collective effort and spread our work actions. And then the final one would be recruitment because of course this cannot be done in isolation. None of this work can be done single-handedly. And when I started the recruitment phase, I was very nervous because I was not sure how many people might be actually interested in this type of work as it connects to labor, but surprisingly, there were many people that really wanted to engage with this and believed in the vision and was very excited to have it move forward. So being able to create the space through recruitment to have interested persons on board, it definitely is leading to the success, the success of our aspired goals. So final, I think this is the second to last <laughs> slide, which is our future goals. Um, so moving forward, because I think we, we are a few months in, we are aiming to recruit new members, of course, to contribute to our current teams and for new positions, uh, such as event planning and outreach. I'm also, well, of, of course, continually working to engage with partnerships. So we are still in the process of having new collaborators. We have persons such as those who are um, international legal affiliates and climate journalists who are very much interested in working with us. So we are still on board with that. One of the great things um, as well would be the in-person event because from the, the success and interest from our first one, we are definitely working to host more in person and we did get the okay from our co-create hub. So we are going to be working towards having more frequent in-person sessions that will be focused on training and server distribution and support sessions, especially for the server dis distribution because we are going to have that centered very shortly. So we'll also use those events to be able to get more persons to share their feedback, to share, to answer the questions so we can gather more information for our data analysis. And then that would go back to the, the last one, which of course is the server distribution. So that is something that we are going to use all opportunities that we have to get people to share their experiences and to give us more insights so that we can understand better the prevalence of climate hazards and risk in Trinidad and Tobago. And that would be supplemented for our policy recommendations. So yeah, that is the end. <laughs> um, of course, thank you all. I, I can't thank you all enough. I, I think sometimes I should be thanking you all more, <laughs> but thank you so much um, for giving me this opportunity to reach where I've been dreaming to reach for quite some time. And of course, if for any for any more information um, on our activities, even if it's for previous ones, you are free to check us out on the Criminal Feminist website, which is listed there. And then we also regularly post on the Crib and Feminist social media platforms, which you can access at the Linktree link. So that is the end of my presentation. Yes.